Welcome to International Securities Exchange's podcast series. Facilitated by renowned educators, ISE podcasts are intended to teach beginning as well as seasoned investors the ins and outs of trading. To find an updated list of podcasts, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts. Please be sure to listen to our important message following this episode regarding the risks of investing in exchange-traded options. Another uh, is just the opposite. If we were bearish the market and we have a predicted pivot resistance target, um, as much as I want to get short the market and I keep saying to myself, oh, I'm sure it, it just can't go any higher. How many of you in the audience today have always said, I'm going to sell it right now. It just can't go any higher. When you say it can't go any higher, that's when it does. Because, yes, it can go higher. So what's really important is that instead of guessing, even though you're near predicted resistance, wait for the market to get there and then look for a change in the momentum. And that's that cross, that point, that inflection point that you want to look to get short the market. That will give you a better chance of success in trading using pivot analysis. Now, just like using the EUU, which is the spot Euro USD index from the ISE, um, as you can see, we like to lay, and this is from my chart, uh, my account with um, using chart package from TOS, Thinkorswim. I'm not sure if anyone's familiar with Thinkorswim, but they have my indicators, both person's pivots as well as my PPS buy sell indicator. When the market gives us as you can see, we're talking about that doji formation. The market gave a buy reading here. But you know what's interesting, folks? Someone may have gotten short but realized that it was at that green support target. That green support target was the predicted low. So I think that if you can learn to identify support, you're going to be better lined up with buying and selling. With the person's pivots, which is interesting, notice that this red is above that red. This red's above that red. It's giving us, and the greens are higher, it's giving us a futuristic look that the market will be and is bullish, and therefore it's giving us a higher high and a higher low reading. If that's the case, you already have at your disposal the information based on a moving average concept that the market conditions bullish. If bullish, look for a buy signal. Don't sell breakdowns. The first rule of thumb that I teach people is don't sell support, at least not on the first test. And don't look to buy resistance, at least not on the first test. And that, I think, is one thing that will help a lot of traders from getting into trouble. The British pound's the same way. Um, you know, the ISE has the spot uh, pound index, pound U.S. dollar index identify that we're at some critical support and we have a nice change in momentum uh, buy signal, I mean, how can that help an options or a securities trader? A, we have a feeling that the momentum's changing in the market. Maybe I could implement some bullish strategies. And of course, you get your shopping list out and you say, well, what are some of my bullish strategies? Limited risk, limited profit. Maybe I want to do a credit put spread. Unlimited profit, limited risk. Maybe I want to buy an outright call. So you can come up with all types of uh, different strategies based on the momentum or identifying where the market is. And one of the neat things to understand about currencies is, boy, when they trend, man, do they really trend. So let me go over and share with you the difference right now And see if everyone can see this. Okay. On our chart, we're looking at the spot euro currency, the ISE. As you see up at the top, it says ISE spot euro USD index. But what you see are person's pivots. What's interesting is that these are monthly pivots. Notice that at the end of every month, new levels are targeted. Red is the predicted resistance, fuchsia is the actual pivot, and green is the predicted support. You know, just like a bear market, it would be nice to know if the market's 
bullish or bearish. If it's bearish, what should be the range? And so it gives us a futuristic approach that here's the potential condition. It's bearish because it's targeting lower highs and lower lows, which is kind of neat. In addition to that, as the market conditions change, it starts to tell us that the conditions have changed. Now we're starting to see bullish conditions. What's interesting is that many times you will see the actual high or the actual low hit right on a nail. Like, for example, last month, the actual monthly targeted low was right here at around this 128.74, and the low actually was 128.76. So, as you can see, the market has a, another doji, a change in momentum, and we've seen the market just barrel straight up. Now, these are monthly pivots, and I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to go over to study. I'm going to edit study, and I'm going to show you something here so you can see. Just so that you know, I'm not cheating. See where it says person's pivots. These are calculated on a calendar month. All right, see that right there? Calendar month. Now, what's interesting is that here's some pivot points comparing the same apple to apple. This is the same Euro currency spot index. But unlike using the calendar month pivots, we're using option expiration. Notice that the 1217, this is when the options expired. Notice that we just had an expiration at 121. And the market came right up to where the predicted resistance for that time frame was. So at options expiration, that was the potential range that the market, it was telling us this might be the potential range. Now for this next option expiration calendar event, we're pressing currently right up against 138.72. That is right up against the current bars or current time frames option expiration. So this is kind of an important area here to pay attention to. And as I go over here to studies, I go to edit studies. Notice, and I go over to person's pivots. See the time frame? It says option expiration. EXP stands for expiration. So what's neat about this, folks, is that you can use pivots in a different time frame other than just looking at a calendar month. That's what I talked about when we first started. I said, I know that you guys have heard me talk about daily and weekly and monthly stuff before. Or if you haven't and this is new to you, pivots are probably one of the best futuristic forward-looking indicators out there. It's a leading indicator. The way that I've constructed and the way that I use pivots is they give me a forward look as to what, A, what is the current market condition, bullish or bearish? And if the market's bullish or bearish, then project out if the market still remains bullish for the next time frame. Show me what the potential range might be based on a mathematical formula. That's the premise of what pivot point calculations are. Are And that's how I use them in my studies. To A, help me identify what the market condition is. B, under that condition, please show me what the potential range might be. So therefore, I have an idea of where I should be buying, where I might be looking to sell, and if I'm interested, maybe take some counter trend trades as the market hits near a forward-looking resistance zone. At least give me an idea that we might see a pause or a stall in the marketplace as we hit an overvalued area. So I have already at my disposal a way to come up with a trading plan. And when you're trading on your time, not the markets, if I have a whole month to prepare or a day in advance to prepare, I know that if the market gets to a certain resistance level, I can now start to formulate a plan and say, hey, is this risk worth that reward? If not, then I'll move on to a different trade. But at least I'm able to spend time coolly, intellectually, and not acting on emotion. 
and formulate a trading plan. You know, we, I, I like to say, and I'm sure all of you have heard the term, I before E except after C, right? Well, I before E should always be before C. I stands for intellect, and E stands for emotions. Put your intellect before emotions, and that, my friends, will help you. Because as Jesse Livermore once stated 75 or 80 years ago now, he stated that it's human emotion that often interferes with human intellect. And that's where man makes mistakes. People trade on fear, they trade on, and they react to the markets, and they don't follow a trading plan. If you can act on intellect and have a set of numbers and a trading plan, I think, and that's what pivot analysis gives us. It gives us the ability to act with more intellect rather than emotion. And it gives us that series through number values. So using option expiration and using calendar month data is something that can help you to say, hey, the euro currency is now starting to break out. We broke out of this high. Um, you know, we're near a, an important top of the market. Maybe I'll start looking for intraday, and that's the key, some intraday setups in the next day or maybe even in tonight's trading session. And we'll always obviously look to go visit how this looks in the next few days. But if we can start seeing that the market getting near the monthly uh, calendar, or excuse me, the monthly option expiration pivot resistance, you know, that's an important target area that I think many people um, would, would at least get a chance to uh, maybe utilize a little bit more. Now, there's other uh, numbers that I'd like to uh, expand on. In fact, uh, I'll go over here and change this from a stock. And this, again, is the person's pivots. But let me go over here and change this here to EUU. And just to show you how this can benefit us, I'm going to change this and edit studies. And I'm going to turn off the monthly. And I'm going to turn on the daily. I'm going to hit Apply and OK. And obviously, if we're using a daily chart, we need to, and we have daily pivots, you're going to see this, a lot of dots. Dailies are good for intraday trading. Sorry about that. Intraday trading. And so if we can identify that the market, and if you can combine candles and momentum studies as the market gets near a pivot resistance target, I think it's something, or if the market's in a bullish buy mode, as you can see this blue arrow, as the market gets up and blows right through pivot resistance area, you know, using one without the other, isn't, it's like using a compound glue. Using one in of itself isn't strong, but using two of the formula, that's where you get a better bond. So it's important that pivots can really work on a, a broad spectrum of time frames and products, particularly even if you're a day trader. And it's important to identify these hidden values because I think that you're going to get a better bang for your buck and more importantly, as I said before, you will be able to formulate a better trading plan. So quite frankly, I think a lot of traders, um, as we talked about today, uh, may have seen some of my research or some of my work before. In fact, my very first book, which cracked uh, the the whole, no one had ever talked about using candlesticks with pivots, was this book here called Technical Trading Tactics. I said, how to profit using pivot points, candlesticks, and other indicators. And the reason I came up with that book is because I didn't want anyone to feel threatened or, you know, abandon any of their prior formal education. After all, I studied and worked for George Lane, who was the innovator of stochastics. For over two years, I worked for Uncle George from 80 through 82. And what's interesting is that 
I still use stochastics, but I found a method, you know, stochastics in of itself wasn't all that great. It was a good overbought, oversold it, oscillator, but more importantly, when I used other indicators, it was good. When I combined candlesticks and more importantly, pivot analysis, that was where things really came together. You can use it with Fibonacci. You can use it with MACD, RSI. The list goes on and on, and that's what that first book uh, really talked about. The second book, and what I consider uh, a, a timeless work is the candlestick pivot point trading triggers for stock futures and forex traders now this book right here is what i was talking about we went through and did back test studies on the various markets to identify the probability of certain candle patterns forming tops and bottoms of the markets and it was this book that also had a trading systems and it divulged the percentage and the statistics and of course the back test studies this was a fabulous book. This is what I consider the Bible of pivot analysis. Um, this was a book that a lot of people had had actual rules. Here, enter here, exit there. Here's where your stops go. Here's where you get in. And it was a great section on risk management. That was really a great book. There were a lot of people that were only interested in trading foreign currencies, and that's where we came up with this book. Um, so we just devoted that's one, a great one John. book towards foreign currencies. And that's where we got those three books. Yes, Steve. John, that was a great book. I haven't read all your books, but I did read Forex Conquer, and I would highly recommend it to all of the listeners. It was a great book. Awesome job. The other books, I'm sure, are just as good, if not better. Well, it's funny. Steve likes Forex Conquer, and my favorite is this one. Maybe because I do more stocks than foreign currencies. People think I'm just a Forex trader. But, you know, the funny thing is, like using um, candlesticks and trading triggers, Steve, using the um, – uh, the options on, and which was really great because a lot of the, when the ISE folks came out with their uh, index, their currency index, I mean, your, your alternative to using options was foreign currency futures. And um, to be honest with you, you know, for an equities trader to try to teach a stock trader, here's about futures and it's risky and you can lose everything. And, and the, you know, it was just all, all, all separate beasts and the rollover. There were a lot of confusing things to teach people. When the ISE came out with their euro currency index, it really solved a lot of those issues where people could now participate using options on foreign currency. So I, I think really for me, Steve, that, you know, both books are great, but, um, the one candlestick trading triggers, and I thank you for your compliment. And, of course, we've had several different books and, and trading courses to help traders along the years. Well, that about concludes our presentation, and I wanted to make sure that we had time. I thought we might have some questions from the audience today, Steve. Since I never have really gone into calendar expiration as pivot analysis um, with your audience at least and with the general public. Usually it's been with our private clientele and, and for our um, uh, the clients over at, at, at other brokerage firms. So I'm glad to have had the invitation to share my work with your audience today, Steve. And hopefully if anyone has questions, we can take advantage of that time and sit together and, and try to work some of these together right now. Hey, John, where else are you going to be in the next couple of months for the listeners that are either in Europe, uh, here in the U.S., or anywhere else? Are you going to be traveling at all? Well, thank you for asking, Steve. Yes, we'll be at New York. We're doing a four-hour intensive seminar at the New York Traders Expo. I believe it's Sunday, uh, February 20th. It's from 1 to 5, and we're going to be talking about seasonality, sector analysis, pivot analysis, uh, risk management, um, some momentum indicators, some of my proprietary uh, indicators that we've developed on, uh, for example, with Thinkorswim or TradeStation and Genesis. Then I will be, for the European clients, um, we will be at the Paris Technical Analysis Expo uh, in March, and then we'll be in Barcelona after that, and then back here in the U.S. of A. Wow. A little bit of travel, but if you're John is traveling to a spot near you. I would highly recommend that you try to uh, attend one of his sessions as he's one of my favorite speakers. He really has uh, an ability to teach the audience, however, keep it very uh, relevant, and that's something that's very hard to do. Hey, John, a couple questions for you here. 
Um, Lewis wants to know if he can get his, uh, get the person pivots with a regular TD Ameritrade account. Can he do that? I believe with – that's a darn good question. Um, well, uh, with TD Ameritrade, I believe per, you can or you have access to use TOS, Thinkorswim. It is available only on the Thinkorswim platform. I'm sure if you ask TD Ameritrade, uh, I will be getting an email uh, from them about 20 minutes after you ask them. Um, so if they can't help you, um, send an email to their customer service, and I'm sure they'll be asking me to, to, to help figure that all out. But we've had a lot of questions regarding that. It is my understanding that you, it, TD Ameritrade clients can use the TOS platform or the TOS charts. I believe that is what I was told. Great. Thank you for listening to our podcast. To find more podcasts on options, stocks, alternative markets, and market data, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts.